This is Jay Krishnamurti's 12th seminar with scientists at Brockwood Park, 1974. I wonder if Krishnamurti wants to continue with what he was doing in the morning. I thought we were going to discuss politics and action, reform, weren't we? Well, that was one proposal. I mean, uh, 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 have I anything more to say? I have nothing more. Well, I said that I was interested in going on with what we did in the morning on the one hand and then I'm very interested in, in this question that concerns me very much, the question of violence on the personal level, how to deal with it on the personal level and in the wider social context. But maybe we won't have time to get into it, I don't know. Well, that's we, so one of the possibilities. Does anybody else want to suggest something? This is the last meeting. This is the last yeah. meeting and you know, we should try to finish by five o'clock. Just uh, might might be something that could be cleared up quite quickly. Um, I've been thinking about what you've been saying, and I wondered if humour had any place in uh, this sort of scheme of things, or whether, of necessity, humour is related to things which are not compatible with this. Obviously, laughter is part of it. Part of seriousness, and humour is part of that. <coughs> I mean, one must have humour. That's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's a relief. <laughs> it was obvious, wasn't it? <laughs> no, it wasn't obvious, actually. I mean, I didn't find it obvious, because um, the state which you were describing, which for you is meditation, or is this, or this, um, seemed to be obliterating well, you, you gave us specific things which you wanted to obliterate, and it, it seemed to me that it not was... Not obliterate, but it doesn't matter. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, not have there. So, um, it, and it wasn't obvious that humor wasn't one of those things which also would disappear. Perhaps we could start uh, discussing uh, the question of politics and violence. Then, if uh, they want to, st start to I don't. I don't want to impose anything. No, I mean. I would also like to have this question with death finished up. <laughs> oh, is there anything more you could say on that, what we're discussing? I think we've this finished. We've finished that. that. Mm -hmm. well, could I ask a short question? But I, I almost think that you wouldn't want to to go I mean say anything about it I think you are not interested in it but anyway for the people who believe in reincarnation or if you believe it I don't in it I don't know if there is reincarnation what is reincarnated that's the whole point sir that's the they believe those who have strong belief in reincarnation believe the self the me with all its anxieties, all the rest of it, continues in a different life till through many, several reincarnations mm -hmm. that self disappears. Yes. And that self disappears through right action each life. You yes. Yes. That is, I behave in the right manner. So that behavior, conduct, morality, aesthetics, and all that is refined as I go along life after life. It is based on the idea of karma, you know something. And eventually, that refined mind, I'm using quickly word, reaches the highest intelligence or the highest immeasurable and so on. So what matters is this life you must conduct your life in the right way, right course, not hurt people. Because if you hurt people you are going to pay for the next life. 
Therefore, don't hurt people. This is what they believe. Yes. Lead a good life now. Yes. Now, what is your position? Would you say that if you die today... But I've explained all that, sir, this morning. Yes. Would it be quite irrelevant to ask what happens at physical death if one lives in this way? One dies. Physically, one goes to pieces. One is burnt, <laughs> cremated, or buried, or got rid of. Whether you have died psychologically before or not, doesn't matter. In the end, it's all the same. You die, and that's it. <clears throat> no, sir, you, you, you haven't understood this. <laughs> I, exp I thought I explained fairly clearly. But perhaps it would be nice if you would say it once again. <laughs> <laughs> So the self, the me, is all the attributes, the qualities, the conditioning, the attachments, the burdens of anxiety, guilt, hurt, all that is the me. That me continues through incarnations, refining itself till the me is totally transformed. So the me doesn't exist, something else exists. That is the generally the belief of those who are convinced there is a life hereafter. And I was saying that the self is a series of words, a structure of ideas, prejudices, conclusions, attachments, ambition, greed, arrogance, hurts. That me can be ended by being free of all that now, not wait till many lives or never end. I explained all that when you die, when there is death. So is it possible to end while you are living with full consciousness, with full awareness, functioning in this world, as a human being, and the me, being aware choicelessly of all the turmoil and so on, all that. And we said, if that self ends now, what is there? We talked about that. But what, what is there? This is what I'm not clear. I thought you said there was an intelligence. No, size. <coughs> I don't know, sir. I don't know. If you have a burden of arrogance, Can one become aware of it in, with its whole significance and its structure and nature and end it? See what happens when you end it. End it or free of it. You have got you have, you are free of a certain burden. And so the question arises. Are these burdens to be put away one by one or all together with one blow? <laughs> I think it can put away all together with one at one with one 
total attention with a mind that sees the whole thing as a whole. And what remains when there is this, there is that freedom, and we went into this question of emptiness, and so on. I think that is, that is a for, of intelligence, of love, and all that. The uh, problem of social and political action seems to arise very naturally from this ground of being, from the condition that you've described of nothingness, but of total potential, because then forms and structures, as they manifest themselves in perception, are seen as transient, impermanent. The world is then not a burden, it's both real and illusory at the same time. You act effortlessly in the world, but with love and with an intelligent creativity. And this is what I understand to be social and political action. I would like to put it this way, ma'am. I would like to talk over me or ask you, what is action? From there we can go into this whole problem. What is action? Is it a, a movement approximating itself to an idea, to an ideal, to a concept, to a formula. And if it is not, then what is the action which is not based on an idea, formula, etc.? This I would like. Is there such action? And what do we mean by the word action? To act. Acting is always in the present. Not I have acted or I will act. So is there an action <laughs> which is not based on this idea, on this concept of ideal and action, formula and action. The Communists have a formula based on Marx, Lenin, and so on and so on. And to them that is the ideal, and make man conform to that ideal and act according to it, economically, socially and all the rest of it. Right, sir? <coughs> and that leads to various forms of suppression, lack of freedom, no dissent, and if there is any kind of dissent you are sent to the mental hospital, or exile and so on and so on. Like Solzhenitsyn, he says that Lenin talked, said, according to him, and he must know what he's talking about, that Lenin said all human beings are insects. Therefore, it doesn't matter if you get rid of them by the million. You form a concept and then conform the mind to that concept force the mind to that concept and act according to that. I am, a, I, have, I am an idealist, I have an ideal, and I conform as much as I can or, or approximate my action to that ideal. I think what is good is not to Smoke, metal, hmm? I'm saying. And that's an idea, and I smoke and I try not to smoke. And I keep this. So I'm asking myself, I'm asking you, whether there is an action 
which is not based on ideal. A concept. And you say that's impossible. You must have an ideal idea, formula, a form according to which you act. And that form is the goal to feed all the people in India or the world. And according to that, let's plan. And you have a formula how to feed the world, and I have a formula to feed the world, and we are at each other's throat. And in the meantime, the poor chap starves. So I'm asking, is there an action which is not your idea or my idea, my concept and your concept? And what is that action? It seems to me that one has to inquire into the nature of economics and society by observation, and one has to um, form ideas as how to proceed and Yes. One must have an openness of mind yes. about how to proceed, which has been lacking, of course, in so there most is political this movements. problem. There is India. I'm taking that as an example. You know, I'm not patriotic about it. India, there is about 15 million new births every year. There were 600 million people. There's starvation. Everything that's happening there. Now. What conclusions do you form and I form and he forms? Ideas about it, how to solve it. If I'm a communist, I know exactly what I want. It's very clear. And if you're a capitalist, you're also very clear and a socialist. Then there are three of us, what shall we do? I am not open to you, because I am very clear. My mind is made up, because Marx says, etc., etc. Lenin says, they have experimented, this is the only way to solve the problem. I have closed the door. I would like you to come into my camp. You ask me to keep my mind open, I say, my mind is open to invite you. <laughs> I mean, as I see it, there has been a fairly consistent development of uh, thought about nature of man and the social order, going towards equality uh, and fraternity. I mean, it's had its very considerable ups and downs, but I think that there has been a general trend in that direction. And in spite of the gross errors of doctrinaire political thought, that we can still hope that one can, with sufficient openness of mind, derive from uh, your own uh, approach that one may gradually find so a way I've, to improve as a things. As communist, I've kept my mind open. I've studied history, dialectic materialism, and Lenin, Trotsky, and all that. And having an open mind, I've studied it. This is my conclusion. You cannot <coughs> prove anything else. I have made up my mind. It is so. You're not implying that if you attempt to work out theories of society, you will necessarily end up with a closed mind, are you? No, I'm not closed. But what will you do with a man like a communist who won't budge, who won't yield an inch to you? 
and he has the same idea of feeling the people, etc., etc., etc. And he wants his way, and somebody else wants his way. What shall we? This is happening, sir. What shall we do? Well, I agree. It's very difficult. Sometimes you have to wait until they die. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe the, this image of the communist might be a little too, exaggerated. too simplistic. Mao, for instance, is a very imaginative communist, not at all closed-minded. I, I, I took not Mao, I took the Russian. Please yes. just limit it yes. to that. Don't extend yes. it. But there has I mean Mao cannot be ignored. Of course not. I'm not ignoring right? it. I'm taking there's it. a man who has done social work, has a, had course, a whole philosophy I'm that was immensely fruitful for a vast country. But he Which call, can be compared to India Russia, in size. He would call Russia socialist imperialist. <coughs> and he would call them revisionist and so on, so on, so on. There we are. So what I'm asking is a different question, which is a man who has studied, worked, and come to a definite conclusion, and he has a definite plan, how will you deal with such a man? Here we are. You've got very different ideas, and I've got different ideas. Or I may have no ideas, and somebody else may have other ideas. How do we come together on this? I'd just like to add that this question isn't unique to the political realm at all, but really um, the question could have been asked about everything we were discussing of course this I, week. Of course, I didn't want to. Um, <laughs> no, now, the, the point is, there is no I mean, it's an int what one could say about any kind of area where there are conceptual <coughs> schemes which don't seem in any way to be linked is that, um, well, I mean, because of this lack of a reference frame, which includes both schemes... How do we cooperate, sir, in solving a problem? Well, any problem. It doesn't have to be a and practical and one. That's, we took up the political mm -hmm. problem. How do we cooperate together? To, to solve a, a human problem of the world. When you have certain complaint, mm. it that's what we are talking about. Well, and well, and I, I want to solve that problem of starvation in the world. I say that the problem is not the technical one, it's the human one, that say, all these countries cannot cooperate, and each one has its own idea. Say, China, you may feel is working very well, but it can't cooperate with Russia, and Russia can't cooperate with America, and none of these people are cooperating with India or the Arabs or the Jews. And the, the question is how that you may propose economic schemes and schemes for development and so on, but it won't have any meaning if people don't cooperate. The problem is, though, that the important issue, I think, is not just in, I mean, it's not just as you just stated it, it's much wider. It includes epistemological problems. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Linguistic yeah. problem, religious yeah. problem. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's start making tentative suggestions about what one does with a person, not to a person, with a person, when one meets that person, and he has a conceptual scheme radically different from one's own, and there is no reference frame from which one could, as it were, appraise, never mind for correctness or incorrectness or truth or falsity, but there's no back, there's no further reference frame from which one could appraise the two of them. What does one do? Now, I, there are, we could suggest tentative answers. I mean, I have tentative answers. You have tentative answers. Go ahead. I don't agree. Hmm? I'm sure that we I don't could agree, agree not to agree. Well, that's I'm unfortunate. I'm sure that after you propose your tentative answers, you'll still uh, disagree, you see. You still won't be able to cooperate. <laughs> Suppose yes. we agree, this, these hypothetical people who are in conflict, they suppose they agree to abolish all theories, to abolish history, to abolish all their structures. Mm -hmm. Then there's nothing that they can disagree about. But they won't abolish. Well, let's just suppose. No, yeah. no, no, no. I'm suggesting. I'm not saying they must abolish. No, that, that's a good move. It's a good, it's a nice I agree, experiment. sir. I agree. <laughs> But, <laughs> no, but, 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 no, but is there a problem with that? I mean, what's left if we strip away everything? You see, no. What's left? You have two human beings. Yeah. No, no, but okay. T talk about the frameworks that they're bringing to bear to whatever disagree. You know, whatever the disagreement we've, is. Well, we've agreed to abolish these frameworks. 
All right, we abolish the we abolish every. Okay, so there's two human beings standing facing each other, <laughs> or with their arms around each other. All right, or uh, yeah, maybe. yeah. But then, w without any, if, if if we do as you say, perhaps per impossible, and strip away everything, we can't even talk. <laughs> hmm? We can't even touch. Well, we can't even touch. Actually, so we can't do anything. Take a very simple problem: Please. the fascist and the communist are the two sides of the same coin. Let me more or less. They don't don't fight over words. Hmm? And there they are, fighting each other in the street. How will you stop it? Well, if they're if they're convinced. Communist on one hand and fascist on the other hand, then that is the position of the world. Yeah, all right. Then you have to, given what's been said most of the time this week, we have to let them kick each other's heads in. But they can't afford that because you see, it's multiplied over the whole world. This chaos. I mean, well, the, the Indian starving. The Arab, Arab and the Jew. They won't. You know what's happening. Mm -hmm. Of course, but I mean, well. The Americans will be involved in it. The Russians, you know, the, the hydrogen bombs. The, I, I feel maybe I, I'm a minor. I feel we're getting bogged down if we get into specific things. Speaking of Indians, I know that's why I Israelis didn't. Say, I, I, I said, what is action? What is cooperation? Well, I could give you a, a fast and ready definition of my a, a, a useful thing to start with. You might disagree. You could say an action is a bodily movement plus an intention. There's an action. Stripped away of all the blah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's a bodily <laughs> movement plus an intention. <laughs> I mean, for what it's worth, how's that going to help our problem? Now take away the intention. All we have is bo are just bodily movements. Mm -hmm. In other words, the difference is between you no know, my hitting your arm and my arms hitting you because it could have been due to I don't know a spasm or mm -hmm. a mosquito hitting etc. So okay, so all we have is a bodily movement. Now take away the body. <laughs> That's what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> no, but. <laughs> <laughs> Could I get, possibly bring this conversation down from academic generalities to, to, to the particular? I mean, we're talking about the, uh, the world community, which one wants to work towards, on a very much smaller scale and to a large extent uh, not comparable, but to some extent I think it is comparable. You have action here in Brockwood. You have a community here in Brockwood. You work out your problems. Any community uh, has inevitably its own problems. You work towards the solving of these. That is, we are willing to sit down together, discuss the problem, willing to listen to each other, expose, if we can, we are children, we are nervous, frightened, and anxious to please, and not to be criticised, you know, all the childish things that go on. So we meet together, discuss these things. They are, at least they are willing to listen. <coughs> Will the Arab and the Jew do it? Will the Hindu and the Muslim do it? You would also agree that there is always the possibility that beginning. I agree. The that let, so, can we begin by exposing our particular idiosyncrasies and say, let's, I forget it, let's work together? Let's, let us meet as men of goodwill. Not with plans, with uh, idea. You follow? Just let's meet together and discuss this problem. How to solve this thing? And if we have capacity, energy, um, very in various forms, then we go and work at it. That is action. Man. That is action. then presumably this type of action can be extended in rather different realms where there are quite different magnitudes of economic forces and social pressures. 
uh, in the political arena in the world outside. But you and I are men of goodwill. We, we, have, we have no concepts, beliefs, all the rest. We are men of goodwill. And from there we start. I don't know that I trust mine if I have sufficient economic I don't know anything about economics. Me. I leave it to you or to the experts. So please be a, be a man of goodwill. Join us and let's work it. You work it out. Not as a specialist, not as a communist, socialist, liberal. This one as a human. But I think we will have to um, inquire and by observation and find out about the bigger world outside in order to help to build of up course, something of course, by goodwill. Of course. So ultimately we must be involved in political action to help to uh, set up the right kind of world and with an open mind in this we will avoid falling into the traps of the uh, doctrinaire political thinkers who have existed so far. You feel that's a fair way I of understand, putting it? I understand, sir. I understand, but the problem is there. I don't know. Mr. Sudarshan, please. Your I exponent. was going to say, <laughs> since you asked, get me into it. I was going to say that um, this whole business of concern with the world seems to be totally at um, uh, discordance with the earlier view in which we said we are going to abandon the ego, we are going to abandon this uh, uh, and therefore the actions have to be spontaneous, it comes from inside and one doesn't go about doing good for other people, you don't even invite people for a long big conference, you simply do the right things instinctively but, when you are in that state. But you are in the state, I am not. Then what will you do with me? I will deal with you with with affection, but yes, with the but firmness. I still go on being an Arab or a Jew or a yes, Muslim. But I will deal with you with firmness. Yes, do deal with me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be connected with it. I mean, the two meetings that we had with the school, one the big meeting, one the small meeting. What struck me most was really a thoroughgoing pragmatism about how to get along, living with each other. Um, an immense amount of goodwill, but most of all a thoroughgoing pragmatism. Now, there was nothing of the superstructure, or if you want infrastructure, I don't know, that we've been talking about all week. There was no, I mean, when, you know, when they were telling about how the school was running, etc., etc., there was nothing about observer and observer. No. Or, now, I think, <laughs> all right, now, I, I think maybe underlying Morris's questions is this, that... Um, there seems to be a view, uh, quite a, an, uh, an art, uh, well, a view which you've articulated to, to your satisfaction in a very, very detailed way. And what we're asking is, how, if at all, does do you or does one link it with just living in the world? And it, and my point was simply that when one observes an institution closely associated with you closely and talks to the people involved one gets nothing of the sorts of views that you were very careful to articulate. All one gets, as I said, is a very thoroughgoing pragmatism plus a lot of goodwill. So we're puzzled, I think, some of us, as to how the superstructure relates to the living. How the... Oh, yeah. Have you asked me or... Well, I was asking, I was addressing you, but I mean, anybody else. Let somebody else answer first. I, I feel that you possibly, you don't uh, surely mean that you get an impression of nothing but pragmatism. I mean, surely you also um, get an impression of um, more, more than that. Where did the goodwill come from? From within each person. Well, well within within each, each, from within each person, within the context of this institution. I mean, the goodwill is an no, independent I, of the community. No, well, another, I mean, it could be, but it could also be that they brought goodwill to the institution. It could be. 
couldn't be. But it wasn't. I mean, well, how do you know? I mean, we have to. Be. No, we said yes, yes. It yeah. certainly could be. No, David said it. Could I mean, be. I don't think that that was. You see, every institution brings group. Uh, similar children came to one institution as another. So if there's any difference, it cannot be explained by what they brought to the institution. All right. Are you saying then that that, that the goodwill is necessarily linked with the? If, I'll, I'll use the worst possible, the theoretical superstructure. Well, that's better. I mean, no, I, 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 I know, but you know, okay, the, the, with the the, more, the the less practically orientated views. Well, with, the, with, all of it, with what's being pointed out, you see that the truth that's being pointed out. In other words, you see that uh, another part of the school, which you may have seen less of, is that uh, you know that uh, Krishna Murti talks to the students uh, regularly and. The, they, the, the staff and students talk with, among each other about these questions and think about them you know, and observe. And uh, all of this, I think, was uh, played a very key part in bringing about this goodwill. We talked the other day about cooperation. The students started. I, I to cooperate, work together. I, I said, we said, you cannot work together if you are prejudiced. Are you prejudiced? Mm. You cannot work together if you have a formula. Your formula, mine is better than yours. That you cannot cooperate if there is authority who tells you. You cannot cooperate together if your self-interest is greater than somebody else's self-interest. You cannot cooperate together if you want to dominate, and so on. So I explained it. And we discussed it great uh, for an hour and a half about what it was. I think that some of them got it, mm, the meaning of it, to work together with, without any barriers, without any um, feds around each other. Mm -hmm. Now, that does create a sense of cooper friendship, cooper desire to cooperate. Mm -hmm. they, they may, because they are students young, they drop it for a day or two and pick it up again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, when they drop it, they get frightened mm -hmm. and say, I'm frightened and suppress it or tell only somebody that I'm frightened. So this goes on all the time. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that somebody could agree with you almost completely about cooperation? Your views, say, about the observer and observer. Oh, cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> OK, great. Now, that, that was very... OK, then, right. <laughs> I understand a lot more now. Right. <laughs> well, then, yeah, in a sense... Look, pra uh, look. Pragmatism isn't all that harsh a word, then. Well, it's just... Okay. Well, because, I mean, that's... But it's still... The, how, the can the, how can those students understand a present <laughs> observed? Mm -hmm. I said, don't bother about it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about cooperation, what's involved. And see if you can cooperate. What is, uh, what with affection, with care, with attention, not etc. etc. And when it gets deeper problems, I want to get rid of fear. Sweden says I want to get rid of fear. Then we go into it carefully. Mm -hmm. There, I go into the observer and observe. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think they understand that. They may not do it. Intellectually, at least, the grasping. Yes. Uh, does this can this argument apply also to many other people in the world who, who in fact, most of them who will not grasp what you say of intellectually? Course. So you just say cut it out, and you just talk about how can we cooperate? Uh, which means don't have ideals, mm. don't have formulas. Therefore, you're free to investigate. That means and you then free to investigate the observer and the observed. Mm. But you don't or have to go there the first. <laughs> don't even say that. Yeah. Okay. But you don't have to go through it first. Yeah. This is not necessary, a necessary requirement to save the world. If you want to go through it first, I say, let's go through it first. Hmm. Could somebody understand fear without understanding the observer and the observer? Of course. But, no. I can understand it. And cope with it. And, and, ah, and wait a minute, it. cope with it, not suppress it, not run away from it. Hmm? 
then you have inevitably come to the point of observer and the observed. Inevitably. And that's <laughs> But when you say, tell to somebody, uh, like children, um, how to cooperate, are you not also feeding in a formula? No. No, that, that's just a clever statement of mine. I say, look, I have no ideals, I have no beliefs. Let's be friends. Hmm? Is that a formula? Let's be friends. Friendship has no formula. I think what the, what the gentleman at the end was meaning was that a lot of the time, I mean, we, every day we meet people who say, look, I'm starting with an open mind. Oh, that, you know, and then they speak in, you know. <laughs> I know the tricks. Yeah. <laughs> That's not. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, you want to say that let's be frank. Yeah, there is a conceptual framework involved there, and uh, there is um, um, there are beliefs, i.e., for that is so to say. Let's be friends. What does it mean to it be means friends with somebody? What does it mean? I confide in you my troubles, hmm? and you confide in me. I, we don't necessarily go to the pub, pubs. I don't go to any pub. I don't know what a pub is inside like in all my life. I've lived in England a great deal. But I, I, a friend, I want to tell you something, because I've, li I've seen you often. I've walked with you. You've been my companion, and in conversation I begin to tell you my troubles, if I have any. And you listen to me, because you are a friend of mine. You pay attention to what I say. You have a certain companionship, certain rapport entre nous. But this that you describe now, namely confiding in somebody or saying something, is more spontaneous. I mean, it's not... Oh, not having formulated. Been you don't say, I'm going to be friends with him and work it out. It just happens. Right, right. But when, when one takes a particular problem, say a problem that exists with the children, I mean, among the children or something, and when, you te when somebody tells them, well, cooperate, because it's good to cooperate. Now, look, Isn't there a formula there? Look, in a small community, as we are here, we have to cooperate with each other. Well, isn't that a formula? No, sir, but it's not a formula. I have to I go and polish the floor. In a sense though there is a formula. I mean you could instead say you disagree with someone, fight with him and the winner will will rule. I mean that's uh, we are, it's appalling, but isn't that just as much a a directive as corporate? Look, sir, I am married to you. Yes. <laughs> this is humor. Huh? I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I do certain things in the house. Mm -hmm. And you do certain things in the house. We don't plan, we don't formulas, we don't say you do this and I do this and you're. <clears throat> we just, we live together, we cooperate together. Oh, yes. We could, but we could also uh, yes, psychologically but fight with each other I, until one of the ones. Uh, would... that, that's a different <clears throat> matter. Don't introduce more. I'm just pointing out. <clears throat> Cooperation in a small community is not necessarily based on a formula. We are trying to say, have that spirit of cooperation, the spirit, the feeling, not, oh, you do this, I do that, but have the feeling of it first. Then we can say, you do that and I do that, and then there is not superior, inferior, I've, I've washed floors many times, I personally, not here, other place, washed floors, clean the toilets, milk cows, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I will cooperate. You see, I think the point is, and it's, a, it's an important point to, to grasp for all of us, for, yes, for all of us, is that the assumption that what we have to do is foster the atmosphere where cooperation will be the natural thing to do is just as much a formula, it's just as much behaving in accordance with the formula as acting in accordance with the stronger one 
No, but I mean, not that look, not that we want to disagree with the outcome. Of course, we all want to cooperate. I mean, any uh, I think, given another assumption of rationality, that, that one would always take up for that. But I think the point that you wanted to make is that it is an assumption, or if you want, a formula, which we decide decide to act on the basis of. It doesn't just flow out of a, a thing naturally. We have to make a decision to be, and we decide to do that to act in accordance with that sort of formula, because we feel it will result in the best kind of life. But it is a decision. And of we course it's other, a decision. But we could take other decisions. Of course, we take, say, in the small community. Like and therefore, that, I think that's what he was meaning by formula. We have to actually, at one point or other, make a choice to act that way. And we, and I am not sure. Hmm. I am not sure. If we all see the same thing together, there is choice. It is because you see it in a different way and I see it different way, then choice comes in. Determinism and say, I will do, you will fight wrangle. But if we all saw the same thing, if we all call that a microphone, there is no problem. If I call it an elephant or a giraffe, then there is a problem. <laughs> Isn't that what Dr. Sudarshan was saying, that it's really not a question of action, it's a question of it happens? Yes, sir, I've been saved. <laughs> I said to bring about the feeling of cooperation which is far more important than the formula, how to do it. Have this and then the formula be if then I'll accept it, I won't make fuss about it. Whether I'm a whether I wash clothes and you pre talk and do something else. I don't feel inferior. But there's something about the whole generation of this feeling of cooperation. At present there is. Young people have it. Here. Young people here have it. Huh? Young people here have it. And I've seen other parts of it so in America, young people. Oh yes, but I mean, what, I mean, I think the other point is that one, of course, one works to generate a feeling. Of course. Yes, but what can be, what sometimes is generated is not cooperation. It's oh, that, and of course, of course. And the problem, well, that's what we got, that's what we started with. What does yeah. one do when one comes up against a group of people or a person who has that's the had whole, generated... That is the whole point. There they are, League of Nations. Mm -hmm. I know one of the big top people, and if they won't even listen to each other. And they're representing millions of people. How will you, how will you make them listen? Even you follow, it took me, how, took us a whole week between us for us to listen to each other. Mm -hmm. Because you're willing to listen. I'm willing to tell you. Mm -hmm. There was certain rapport, there was certain friendship, certain affection, certain care to understand something. But these fellows, they have got vested interests. They are this, they are that. So how will you bring about this thing among, among people? Between us, look at it, sir. For a, a whole week it has taken us <laughs> to go beyond our conclusions and barriers, arguments. I have... I've talked to communists, blood red communists, card carrying communists, and fascists. Go up to a certain point or beyond that. Not an inch. Like a, like a practicing Catholic, go to a certain point? No. And I said, for God's sake, man, sit down. Let's talk. But I don't want to. You know, I've been through all this. But you see, the, the problem, or the interesting question is, what would count for both of them, your pink red or your perp, your deep red communist? What would count for them as um, the right sort of thing to to talk about? Because I agree with you. I mean, there reaches a point where they'll they'll stop talking. But I mean, the standard answer, standard answer is that what one does is. Get the conversation around to the point where both parties, however much their views disagree, see that it is in their best interests to cooperate. But that is a, that is quite against what 
the general flow of this conference. In other words, what, what, I'm, what I'm suggesting is that the best way to get people, diametrically opposed political people, to talk is to show that they're on the same sort of um, decision matrix somewhere. In other words, if, however much they differ, if they do the same action X, it'll be in both their interests. And then they'll, you'll get them to cooperate. But, but that seems incompatible with the whole, with what everyone here wants to say. <laughs> but it seems to work. I mean, that, that's how, at least, that's how social progress, at least recent history, historically speaking, has... So some of the prominent gurus, both in India and the West, have come to see me. Mm -hmm. They say, you're perfectly right. You're speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. But we can't reach that state, so we go on our way. That's the end of the conversation. Has ever has, any, has ever has it ever been the case that someone has come to you, listened to you, and said, "You were perfectly wrong," so I'm going to go. Uh, away. No, no. Uh, some have said, "Of course." <laughs> and what do you say? With that? Uh, you say, "You goodbye, have a good life." <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't beat him all day. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it's very important to do, to find out what is action. I think this, if we could go into it a little bit, perhaps we'd understand the whole fields of action where concepts are necessary and where action without concept is possible, and so on. Because I think ideals are separating people. Beliefs are separating people. I am a Catholic, you are a Protestant, and we are North Ireland. That's what's happening. It's very simple. If for economic, other reasons. So if you could talk a little bit about it. Is one of the problems when we come up against ourselves, we we're maybe um, have less ideals and things. Then we come up against other people who do have them. Um, then one has the problem of what, how to deal with this. He asked me the other day, "Have you a form?" Mm -hmm. If I said, "If if I have a form about him, I cannot understand." Him. I, I percolate I, through my filters, and I must get rid of those filters to understand the person. It's so simple. In the, but I'm willing to do that. I want to do it. Because I, I feel it's very important to understand. But that means I'm willing to expose myself to you, so that I discover my filters. And I'm willing to get rid of those filters. After seeing them, I, I want to get rid of them, so as to see how to deal with him, with this particular situation, or total and so on. But that means I am aware of what I'm doing. I am aware that my my tremendous interest is to understand, co-op, and all so on. But that means I must know myself, I must, I'm willing to put away things from me. After all, that is science, that is not, that is the importance. Would you distinguish between spontaneous action and action of effort and that kind of action? The word spontaneous is a rather difficult word. <laughs> because who is spontaneous? There's no who in this sense of spontaneity. No, but I must say, spontaneity means no motive, no calculation, no direction. It's like 
I see a child being hit or drowning, I there's an instant action. So are we capable of spontaneous action? Not there is a spontaneous action. That's merely theory. Can 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 I act spontaneously? That means aesthetically, you know, that's the real aesthetic sense of doing things out of your heart wholly, out of your heart, out of your mind, out of your total, total being, without contradiction, without regret, without saying, my God, I wish I had done it. Do you feel that this, this, uh, <laughs> this kind of action is related to what we were talking about when we say that the that the appreciation that the observer is the observed is the transformation. And is also, that... sir, this happens when you love somebody. What are we all talking about? We're all so damn intellectual. When I love somebody, I do this. I, there is no me at the moment of I love. This is such a natural, natural thing, I don't know what to make so much fuss about it. You're make looking superior. Because most of us can't love. Well, that's that's why we make a fuss about it, because we're not capable of it. That's just it. Some of us make a fuss about it because we'd like to know a little more clearly what's going on when we do love. <laughs> yes, that's important. Yes, that's important. <laughs> we'd like to know what's going on. And, you know, and to say it just happens is, is, that, is unsatisfying. Do, you say, do I say to my wife, I love you, I want to know all about it? Of course not. Of course, no, 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 no. Of course not. But in but if one has lived a life that has been full of loving and etc., you might one day sit down in a quiet, cool moment by yourself in a room, light up your pipe, or I would light up my pipe, <laughs> and, and contemplate love. Not not the people I'm loving or the 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 fusion of the person and the loving and me etc. Just, what is love? I mean, that's a meaningful yeah, um, that is, that ends up in smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. Yes, humor. <laughs> Did I understand you to say that there are situations where it's necessary to act with concepts, with a principle? No, sir. No, sir. Yeah. I'm just, please, we must go back to this question of action. We were refusing to go into it, or we're pushing it aside. What is action, sir? What is doing? I meet a snake. I was walking in the Sequoia Forest in California, by myself at 11,000 feet. And I, I've been walking and I turned round, round the corner, there is a bear with four cubs. She pushes the four cubs among the trees, turns round and faces me. Then what is action there? I turned round, I said, goodbye, lady. <laughs> if I'm frightened, if I, she would smell it, she would get fear. And so we were as close as this, ten feet or five feet apart. I turned round and walked away, and she left me alone. You were lucky. <laughs> and I, and I, I'm asking, what is action? Just, I mean, I'll show you. I was staying in North, in Rani, Rani case, it's north of India. And a man comes to me and says, Do you want to see a tiger? It has killed a cow. I said, I don't want to see it because of various reasons. So I, after he left, I said, I'd like to go and meet it naturally in the woods. So in the evening, I walked, went into the forest, 
and as I walked, everything suddenly became silent. Birds stopped singing, the monkey stopped in their trees motionless. And I knew there was some dangerous thing happening. I wanted to go on, <laughs> see what it was, but the body refused. So the body went up against the tree and leant against it and wouldn't move. And I, mine said, I want to find out whether I can face a tiger. Body refused. That's action. So, sorry, I'm making a personal history of this. I'm not making a personal history. A monkey comes, one of those big monkeys, I was doing yoga, comes to the window and we, I open my eyes, there it is. We look at each other, wild monkey, stretches out his hand to me and I go up and take hold of it. It's a very soft hand, beautiful hand, pliable, exquisite hand. And we hold it for two or three minutes. And it, it wants to come in. Because I said, <laughs> I said, if you want to, and went away. So that's action. And action. I dissolved that organization because I saw it immediately and dissolved it. That's action. I want to finish. And I have had no <coughs> ideals at all in my life, no goal, no purpose. And I acted, I have acted. So when you put all this together, what is action? This battle between ideas and ideals, you believe this and I believe that, I am a communist, you are a socialist, I am an Arab and so on. So I think this is really a very important question. The Hindus say action is karma. The root meaning of that word, correct me please, means to act. And they say, action, I act because there has been a cause in my past life which conditions me to act in a certain way. Right? And therefore I cannot alter it except modify it. And you see that's action. Because past life, the roots are there, the cause is there, I can't alter the cause, and the effect of that cause is my action now, which is, more, which is not complete, which is disgusting or whatever it is, and it's, that's action. And the community says, you know, the whole thing. So what is action when you are confronted with all this? The neurotic, the believer, the Catholic, the Protestant. What is action? And each interpreting his action in his own way. So is there an action that doesn't belong to all this? That is whole action, not belonging to something or an ideal action. Sorry at all. There's another way of of, of approaching this whole notion of action, which would perhaps, I don't know, be more closely connected with your concern. I don't know. Um, you mean this is not helpful? A little, yes, it is. It is. <laughs> I, no, is no, no, it, no, I want to know if this isn't it, helpful. It, it is helpful, but I think um, there's another view of action, uh, which is... Wait, 
Is this not <laughs> helpful? Oh yes, it describes quite clearly to me That's anyway how how you what action is for you. No, <laughs> you see, yes. you no. see, it is not my action. I said, look, there's the action of an idealist. No, what the concept of action then means for you? Sorry, that's... No, no, no. I look at the... an idealist. Mm -hmm. He's got ideals, and according to that ideal he acts. Mm -hmm. That is the Hindu... I explain what yeah. he acts. Then that is the communist, he's, he's got concept absolute dialectical material, etc., etc., and he acts. And somebody acts because he's hurt, deeply hurt from childhood, and his action is neurotic, mm -hmm. and he calls it that sanity. And there is the action of a man who is, uh, who is aggressive, violent, and he acts, and so on, so on. And looking at all this, I'm not including yours, <laughs> and I say, what is action? Not another action, or adding, you can add more uh, lines or more uh, to it, it all is enclosed in this. Mm -hmm. And from that I say, what is action? Not, is there another action? What is action from when you have observed all mm. this? But you also said, if I understood you correctly, uh, that with open-minded observation and inquiry and thought... Yes, sir. That perfect action. This can then lead to action. Yes, that's right. Mm. But that freedom of action is not possible when I have ideals, when I believe in the whole structure of economic, etc., capitalism or communism or Maoism, or I completely conditioned by the Catholic dogma. Then I'm not, I say I'm open mind, but I'm closed. So I, I have observed this all through my life, and I say, what is action then? Everybody says this is action. What is action? So I say to I say, is there an action which is not based on concept? I say there is. You can act without a concept. But the carrying out may have need to have, need, needs have a, a line, a direction, and so on. But the feeling, the capacity to act without a formula. May I say something? Of course, please. Uh, about um, Henry V, when Prince Hal became uh, Henry V, it was said he had no weaknesses, no, not even the noble weakness of mercy. Um, Bhagavan Buddha was concerned with the sufferings of the world, a very noble quest. He devoted, I mean, threw away his kingdom and um, devoted his entire life, did lots of experiments. Finally, he had enlightenment in which he found the cause of suffering. But that is not yet it. He did not find out the nature of himself. He only found out the nature of suffering. And no, therefore no, he no, preached no, compassion. No, I will forgive me. I'm not standing up for Buddha. <laughs> no, no, I no, I was just going to say that if I were if we were in agreement, if if we communicated this morning or we spoke yes. the same thing with, even though with yes, different yes, mouths. Yes. Then compassion, the right action, etc., are secondary, which come 
as fragrance follows the flower. That's right, sir. Therefore, that fragrance cannot exist if you have an ideal and I have a formula. Agreed. That's But all. That's all I'm saying. Not agree. It is so. It is so. You see, but you and I are willing to look at it. You and I understand the same language. You and I are uh, inquiring into it, looking at it, and mm, all the rest of it. So say yes, that is possible. It is so. But somebody says, "Who the? What are you talking about? An action without ideas? You're loony." And that is the trouble, sir. You follow? That is what's happening in the world. Everybody has got a formula. But I mean, you're not objecting to the uh, open-minded use of of formulae, surely, um, as uh, part of the process of of thought. But is your point that uh, attachment to these things uh, tends to generate a rigidity? We, sir, we agree. We see the same thing. Then to put it out into action, I must, thought must operate logically, sanely, healthily, not personally, and therefore effectively. But we have seen the same thing together. It's not. I see it. I am trying to convince him, or he convinces me. It, we both see the snake as a poison, and therefore, in avoiding it or in doing something to it, we will think it out. This seems to imply your presence in the same point at the same time and with the same I said that, frame of mind. I said that. This is easy for two people. It's already difficult for us all here. No, no, But not, for two scale, not for two people. If both of us, if all of us feel the same thing at the same time, at the same level, with the same intensity, it, we see the thing together. But we're not willing. Yes, but even if we did so, we are not the whole world. No, why not? We are the world. Well, are we went people. into that. If you and if we all <coughs> transform, etc., our the, we affect the consciousness of the world. Obviously, the priests have, the Catholic priests have affected the consciousness of the world. So has Hitler. I'd like to say something about this connection or non-connection between actions and concepts. Um, say I go for a walk, I'm walking through the fields, and I see somebody and he's waving around frantically. I don't understand what he's doing. I see him, he's gyrating in a very peculiar sort of way. Now, if I go further, I'll get no, shot. No, 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 I go further and I still see he's waving and I don't understand what he's doing. I then go further and I reach the crest of the hill where he is at so I can look over. And I see on one side, let's say, a car that's overturned and burning, and the other side, oh, a, a group of people who are, say, camping over there. And suddenly what he's doing clicks. I see that he's trying to signal to those people to come and help him for that reason. Now my point is this, that in order to even give what he was doing, in order to understand what he was doing, I had to give his action a description. And the description that I gave it was partly due to the aims or the goals or, if you want, to the ideals that he had at a particular time. In other words, I couldn't understand, I didn't even know that he was doing any action, let alone a particular action, until I saw the context, which then, as it were, from which I got the description of his action. So it seems to me that Brian's question, I mean, I think I would argue that concepts are almost, I'm not... 
I don't want to say necessary or not necessary to do an action, <coughs> but in order to understand a bit of behavior as an action, one has to describe it. It's and in describing simple. it, one has to have in mind the aims or goals it of... It is fairly simple, isn't it? You're on the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. You're waiting to come. I come up. I say, then look. We then both see it. Mm -hmm. hmm? I, don't, I haven't uttered a word. I said, come, make a gesture. Wait. And we both see the same thing. Hmm? Then we do something together because we both of us see the same thing. My example was that I came, but you weren't signaling to me, you were signaling to I, someone. I, I, so I, no, was, so just... I was an observer, looking at and uh, trying to understand what you were doing. And I couldn't understand what you were till doing. Till you got there. Yeah, until I saw the context that you were moving yes, but around. But you came up there. That's the main point. You went up there. That's all. Let me give you another example. Sorry. I mean, I, I, that's a, I, I mean, this one probably is a bit clearer. Someone's driving his car and he starts um, putting his hands out of the window. You know, this way, his blinkers are broken, say. So he's going up like that and up like that, and he's all, depending on what country he's in. Now, we say, what is he doing? What's he doing? Well, I could, I could say he's doing a lot of things. He's signaling to make a turn. Um, he's trying to get home more quickly than he would if he wasn't doing that, um, etc. In other words, the same bodily movement will elicit very different types of action descriptions depending on what he's doing. Now, how do I get that description? How do I understand what he's doing? Because I we both have agreed, when I put out my hand, up, it means I'm going left or right, we both have agreed. But that isn't what he... He was going home quickly. He wasn't going up and down, you see. <laughs> this is becoming... <laughs> Uh, now, uh, perhaps, uh, going back to your earlier example, mm. it may be that, suppose a person was waving not to you, but to the person behind, you misunderstood. And you say, well, I don't really understand what he is doing. You go up there, and it turns out that you are not the person who was asked for. What happens? Well, you then realize that you are not the right person to go. A child is being thrown by its uh, father into the river just to, just to teach it not to be afraid. But you don't see that. You think that a child has fallen down and you have gone and saved it because you instinctively save it. The worst that happens is that you might look a little foolish. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter. Unless you feel that you must optimize your action, that find out all the information about the thing and do only the right things. If you have no preconceptions about your role, you do the best that you know in that particular context. You may be in fact mistaken. When you say you have to understand what is going on, I mean, suppose somebody is waving frantically and uh, they're really signaling to somebody else who is helping them, but you don't understand and you go and sort of participate in the thing. It doesn't really matter because if you made a mistake, somebody will tell you it's mistaken and then you, you… Otherwise, you have to wait until you find out what the signal means. And the signal may be a frantic signal and you may not be able to respond to it. Or in it the cases where you respond to an emergency, Mm -hmm. uh, or do something spontaneously um, because of, uh, it's a, a loved one is there and you go and hug her. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really, you don't say, well, now I must go and uh, increase the, pr you know, physical pressure and so on. <laughs> uh, it's, it sort of happens spontaneously. Now, if it were <laughs> not your wife but somebody else's wife, it could create complications. <laughs> then, you after, then you get into trouble. But it is still better <laughs> to have gone and uh, <laughs> than not to have done it at all. Well, okay, let's, let's talk about more important things. Truman, Truman pressed the button, yes? And two bombs went boom. Mm. Now, I mean, he could, um, one could describe what he did in, a, in the most terrific way, or we could say, well, he shortened the war and saved lives. So it's not a question of just looking foolish, etc. I mean, sometimes incredible... Yeah, in fact, you could create a lot of problems. And very important things hinge on the way one describes the action. <coughs> this is a secondary question still. You see, you're asking a question that may arise and trying to find the right thought to guide your action, you see. Uh, in other words, the right direction or the right approach. But uh, the deeper question is whether we have uh, this feeling which creates a common action. You see, that feeling which uh, doesn't have any cause, you know, like the same feeling of moving away from the tiger. Uh, we, and... Uh, 
Now, and under certain conditions, that will lead to the need for us to work, develop a system of thought uh, on which we agree and which will help to uh, guide us to, uh, which will help to define the action. But the Nazis worked together. No, they didn't, not in that same sense, you see. Why not? Why not? They certainly work together. I mean, who are we to say that the spirit of enthusiasm, of suddenly clicking in, etc., wasn't there? I mean, or, or, or the, the Bolsheviks worked together. Well, that's not really cooperation, but uh, it goes deeper, you see. Well, that's what we said before, when it says that this state that we've been talking about, that gives birth to the action. Well, but that's why we can't describe it. What state? Oh sure, yeah, but I'm saying that that is a condition which is neither necessary nor sufficient for it to describe anything. I mean, the Nazis had it. Why, I mean, well, no, they didn't have that actually. I mean, I think they, you know, we could go into that, but I mean, they, they used, uh, you know, quite a bit of authority and force. Well, I mean, you know, what it seems, what you seem, to, you, you're, you're sort of, you're necessarily ruling it out whenever the result is such that you want to disapprove. And, um, but they had a theory. I think you wouldn't deny that they oh, had a theory of history. Yes, they had a theory. Would you listen to me, sir? I'm asking you if there is an action without a formula. There is, I say there is. You're trying to find out. I know all the arguments against that, because I've faced it all my life, <laughs> from a different directions. I say, do listen to me and find out if they find out, you know, not from me only, find out for yourself if there is an action without a concept formula and all the rest. Listen to it. I know the arguments which will oppose it, add to it, or take away there is no such action as that. I know all that. We have said it, other people have said it a dozen times to me. Mm -hmm. And I say, all right, I know all that. I am telling you something. <laughs> I say, please do listen to this. This may be the solution to our problems. Maybe, I don't say it is. Maybe. And you want to find out. Mm -hmm. So find out. Don't oppose it. Don't say, yes, this is this, that's that, the other thing is that. Because I know how to deal with it. Well, I've, I've been 50 years at this game. <laughs> wait, wait. So I said to you, please, listen, find out. It may, it may alter your whole... Listen, find out. It may, it may alter your whole vision of life, vision of action. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all. Basta, as the Italians say. Basta. Now, can I listen to something which you are telling me without opposing? without bringing counter-argument, counter-opinion, or modifying what I'm saying, ch checking it and playing around. Just listen to the song of a bird. It may tell you lots more than you tell it. <laughs> I'm just... that's all. Five now, and uh, if nobody has any burning questions. Uh, perhaps we should close the conference. Uh, uh, Unfortunately, sir, we haven't solved this question at all. I know, but we we'll need another conference. Ah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think we've made some steps. I mean, I feel that some communication has taken place. I think most people agree. Uh, in really quite a remarkable degree in comparison with the sort of communication that takes place throughout the world generally. Uh, so uh, uh, 
and I think I, I think the conference has been worthwhile, very worthwhile, and I have talked enough with people to see that that is the general view. Uh, now, uh, so perhaps we'll just uh, uh, just close it. I mean, I, uh, uh, I, I, I hope that uh, everyone, I'm sure that everyone has enjoyed it, and uh, uh, I think we should all agree to, you know, to uh, thank the staff at Brockwood Park who have worked so hard to help make it a success, and uh, uh, also we include George Carnes who has worked very hard on recording it, especially.